<laughs> yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'm not far off either. I'll, I'll be <laughs> honest. true. But that is a trend, though. And, and honestly, Nick, you had a lot of names to choose from because Tech has run into the Ohio Valley several times in the NCAA tournament. As Kel Johnson begins the bottom of the seventh, we got a new arm on the hill, a side-arming left-hander who misses inside to Kel. And that would be none other than Tyler Aldifer, southpaw from Percasey, Pennsylvania. And the peculiar delivery misses outside. 2-0 and on Kel. But obviously Jacksonville State, the most recent Ohio Valley Conference foe that Georgia Tech has faced. 2-0 pitch. It has popped up high in the air. First base side, but well foul. That'll land in the fifth row of the bleachers. Down the first base line. 2-1. and one. Jackets also faced Jacksonville State in the 2004 NCAA tournament. Beyond the Gamecocks, Tech has faced Tennessee Tech in the 1997 NCAAs. Austin P in both 96 and 2011. The 2 1 is stung foul out of play. 2 and 2. Then Southeastern Missouri State, they played Southeast Mizzou four times in 98, a weekend series, and then also an NCAA tournament. Then Eastern Kentucky in 1985. Bottom line is, when it comes to postseason plays, you're changing see Belmont later. The 2-2 is clubbed. High in the air, left field. Kogan going back. He'll make the catch. Got right to the track and then took a couple of steps inward. Kel just missed it, that ball a little bit, and then that wind's not helping uh, holding that ball back. But we've seen Kel hit some moon shots, and uh, that was looking like it was going to be another one there for Kel Johnson. Tyler Vaughn, by the way, who's in line for the loss. Six innings, nine hits, nine runs, seven earned, two walks, and four strikeouts through 94 pitches. As this pitch, in at the knees on Coleman Poget. Last time Poget came up, he singled into right center to bring home a run with two outs. Didn't have a chance to add this stat, but entering play today, Nick Jackett's hitting close to 380 with two out. The pitch is fouled away 0-2. We talk about that, the difference between good teams and great teams and teams that are successful uh, throughout the longevity of a season is those teams that can score with two outs, those teams that can take advantage of mistakes and, and put up some big runs with two outs. And It's not always the big innings that you need to have, but it's those big two-out hits to score a run that really... Uh, the 0-2 is high. That can really uh, damper the uh, opponent team's... Um, uh, offense and defense, you know, they can sit there and like, man, we had them on the ropes, we had two outs, and they somehow scored one or two runs that inning. And if you do that a couple times, uh, you'll find yourself winning more times than losing. The one-two misses outside on Poget, two and two. Aldifer so far this season, this is just his second appearance. His first, he went two-thirds, he gave up a run on three hits. Pitch is high, three and two. Jack is back in action tomorrow against these same Belmont Bruins. First pitch at 2 o'clock. Live on the air at 140. A 3-2 pitch. Jack swing. Appeal to first. Did not go. Ball four. And Coleman Poget picks up yet another walk. His first of the day, but his team leading sixth of the season. And what a stark contrast that is to his numbers last year, which he did struggle with the swing and miss. And that's, uh, that's what I was saying. It's very uh, impressive for Poche here uh, being able to have a good eye because he is an aggressive hitter. He's a guy that wants to go after the baseball. He wants to put damage uh, early in the count on the ball. So it's good to be able to see Poche uh, knock out some walks here, uh, really working on his vision at the plate. The pitch. And for a call, strike going one on Chase Murray. Jack is leading 9-3. to three. Of Texas, nine hits, five have been for extra bases, four doubles, and a Trevor Crayport home run. The 0 1. This one hits Murray on the right arm, it looks like, and then I think he accidentally hit the umpire with this bat as he threw it aside. Oh, the perils of being a left handed hitter. <laughs> he walked back there to apologize to Randy behind the dish, but uh, you never, you never want to hit the umpire, I can tell you that. 
as a catcher, you're taught to keep all the balls off from the umpire, and uh, I guess we'll have a talk with Chase Murray that we probably should have hit him with the bat either. Uh, I'll tell you, one player who wouldn't make that mistake is Joey Bart, because <laughs> he has to go back out there in the top half of the inning and answer to him. Chase can kind of hide out there in left field and see if he can survive the next three innings without having to meet Randy again. <laughs> So Chase, a hit by pitch. He moves to first. OJ on to second. And now here's Ryan Purifoy, who's 0 for 2, but has walked and scored and also stolen a bag. Now lefty's pitch on the inner half 0 and 1. He's just funky enough uh, with a good change of pace from uh, seeing Vaughn earlier, you know, seeing Tyler Vaughn earlier in the game, and, and then now moving to uh, just a weird delivery, uh, just funky arm action and... Uh, one inside. Really keeps uh, our hitters off balance here, so we'll see uh, if they can kind of bounce back and be able to knock a few more across the plate. He's the classic example of Jason Richardson in my mind as the 1-1, one, one, or maybe it was Richmond, as the pitch is flown high in the air to shallow right. Long run for the second baseman. That's Borgenal who makes the catch two away. That one in foul territory. And again, we see that wind really blowing the ball around still here as it's getting late. The sun starts dropping. The, the wind should die down a little bit here, but uh, that wind's still doing a number up there. Brand Stallings come in as a pinch hitter. Meanwhile, other defensive changes. Matt Kogan moves to center. As Hunter Allen remains in the game to play left field after pinch hitting in the top half of the set. Jackets leading 9-3 to three with two on and two out. We've also got a new catcher in the game. That would be number two, Austin Reynolds. Stallings pinch hitting for McCann now with a lefty in the game. Poge at second, Murray at first. A call strike in the inner half, 0 and 1. But when I say Jason Richmond, former left handed side armor for Georgia Southern, he kind of got double the benefit. One, he had a unique angle, and two, he was a left hander. Didn't see a lot of either, much less one and the same as the pitch is inside. It shows you. It shows you as well, Wiley. Uh, you don't need to throw 95 to be able to get outs. You know, you just need to have something, some little tool, whether it's a arm action, whether it's a, you know, a way you release the ball. One one outside. That can just uh, can cause you to be successful there on the mound. You've got Ben Parr, who's got a very deceptive delivery. You've got Matthew Gorst, who has one elite pitch that, if he's not careful, may carry him all the way to the big leagues. As the 2-1 is fouled back 2-2. Two and two. In fact, that's what Jim Poole, who we've had on the air a couple of times, says. Gorst and I are very similar. We each had one just elite pitch. And there's a space for you if you have an elite tool. We've seen the knuckleballers come out. I mean, we've seen, you know, in, in Gorst, his, his cutter, sinker, whatever, whatever you want to call it, his funky pitch. 2-2 two, two is fouled. I think he called it the funk at the one fun point. Yeah, I think it was at one point there, Wiley. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that, that shows you that you can be successful with that. If you can throw it where you want to throw it and uh, be able to throw it at any given time, uh, you can really have a long career in this game. Brad Stallings has a number of tools. And so far this season, 5 for 25. Sends a ground ball. That's back in it by the shortstop. Conger is thrown a third. Is not in time. Coker held the bag, but Poggi beat it out. And that was a good good play over there at uh, shortstop. Uh, reads it well. They have Brant Stallings shifted over there on the left side of the field, so he's in perfect position for the rollover for Stallings. Uh, just couldn't quite get it out of his glove in time, and Poggi with pretty good speed over there uh, slides in safe to third. Tough scoring decision here as well. Backhanded play, tough play for the shortstop. Could go with the fielder's choice. We'll see what they decide. They went with an E6. The pitch on the outside corner, 0 and 1. So an E6, that'll be a fielder's choice that allows Stallings to reach. And then Poge safe at third on the air. That is the fourth miscue in the field for Belmont today. The 0 1. High, 1 and 1 on Will Height. How about what this middle infield has done today, meanwhile, for Tech offensively? Wade Bailey, three for four, three RBI. Austin Wilhite, two for three with two RBI. That's five hits, five runs driven in, and five runs scored. 
1-1 outside. 2-1 by the Yellow Jacket double play combo. And being able to have a bat at the end of the lineup like Austin Wilhite, we've talked about that multiple times. But being able to have him, is, it's a second leadoff position. You know, he could be batting in Wade's position, and Wade could be in the ninth hole as well. So it's great to be able to get that production. 2-1 is fouled off to the right. And again, the key to the Yellow Jackets' success this year is not only on the mound being able to pitch and command the game on a defensive sense, but offensively being able to uh, battle one through nine and not give up any easy outs. You know, it's it's in the past couple years or in the past years, um, you know, we've probably had some guys in the middle that could cause some damage and then maybe some lesser on the... 2-2, two, two. this is a bounding ball through the middle into center field. Scoring is Poge, hot on his heels, Chase Murray. It's a two-run single for Austin Wilhite. He's knocked in four today on three hits, and Georgia Tech leads 11-3. Just as we were saying earlier, you know, Austin Wilhite, you know, not going to really damage you with the long ball, even though he can uh, hit him out of the park a little bit in BP, but uh, right there just stays on top, doesn't try to do too much, takes what the pitcher gave him and uh, hit a nice ground ball right back up the middle where it came from. Both those runs unearned. Stallings moves to second. Wilhite now aboard at first. And Wade Bailey, the other half of Tech's middle infield at the dish. And he sends a tapper back to the mound. On for a trouble picking it up. Is there a first? Is in time. They get weighed by half a step. Nice recovery there by the left-hander Alderfer. But he's unable to get out of the inning without allowing two runs to score. The Jackets had only one hit but one error and two men left on base. We go to the eighth. It's Georgia Tech 11, Belmont 3 on WREK Atlanta. <laughs> 